Hi everyone, this is Professor Emda Science and today we will derive the energy eigenvalues of a general two-state quantum system in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. Many important quantum systems are described by two-dimensional state spaces. A very famous example is the electron, which is a spin one-half particle. And another example is a qubit, which is the building block of a quantum computer. In this video, we're going to calculate the energy eigenvalues of a general two-state quantum system, which amounts to diagonalizing a two-by-two two matrix. There is also a companion video where we calculate the corresponding eigenstates, so make sure that you check it out. So let's go! Let's set up the basics of a two-state quantum system. We consider a general Hamiltonian H, which can be expressed as a two-by-two two matrix like this. Remember that the Hamiltonian is a Hermitian operator, so H is equal to H dagger. We find in the video on the 2x2 two two matrix space that for a 2x2 two two matrix to represent a Hermitian operator, we must have that the diagonal elements H11 and H22 are real numbers, and the off-diagonal elements are the complex conjugates of each other. The aim of today's video is to find the eigenvalues of a general Hamiltonian of a two-state quantum system. And that means that we will be interested in solving this eigenvalue equation, where as usual, these are the eigenvalues and these are the eigenstates. Two-state quantum systems play a key role in many areas of quantum mechanics, from the spin angular momentum of spin one-half particles to the qubits of quantum computers. And that means that what we will learn today will find applications in many areas of physics, and you can find examples in the videos that we've linked below. Whenever we want to find the eigenvalues and eigenstates of an operator or matrix, we need to consider the corresponding characteristic equation, which in our case is given by the determinant of this expression set to zero. If we consider the argument of the determinant, we can explicitly write out the Hamiltonian matrix minus lambda times the identity matrix. If we evaluate this expression, we end up with h11 minus lambda, h12, h21, and h22 minus lambda. This means we need the determinant of this expression to be equal to zero. The determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix is simply the product of the diagonal terms minus the product of the off-diagonal terms, and we need to set this to zero. Let's make some room, and let's copy down the polynomial equation we need to solve to determine the eigenvalues. We can multiply out the first term here to obtain lambda squared minus lambda times h11 plus h22 plus h11 times h22. We then add the second term here, which we simply copy, and set this all to zero. This is a second order polynomial equation of this general form, where in our case the unknown x is given by the eigenvalue lambda. You probably first learned the solution to these quadratic equations in secondary school, and it is given by this expression here. This result shows that, as expected, a second order polynomial equation has two solutions, given by the plus and the minus signs here. Using this general solution for our expression, we get that lambda is equal to 1 half times h11 plus h22 plus minus one half times the square root of h11 plus h22 squared minus four times h11 times h22 minus h12 times h21. Let's make some room again, and let's copy down the expression that we got for the eigenvalues. We can further simplify the argument of the square root. If we start with this square here, we can expand it out into the usual three terms. We then copy the remaining terms here, and I'm going to slightly rewrite them for convenience. We next need to note 
two facts. First, we can combine these two terms to get minus two times H11, H22. And we can then combine all of these into H11 minus H22 squared. Second, as H12 and H21 are each other's complex conjugates, we can write this term as the absolute value of H12 all squared. And now putting everything together, we find that the eigenvalues lambda of a general 2 by 2 Hamiltonian are given by 1 half times H11 plus H22 plus minus 1 half times the square root of H11 minus H22 squared plus 4 times the absolute value of H12 all squared. And this is it. Whenever we have a two-state quantum system, we can find its eigenvalues by evaluating this expression in terms of the corresponding matrix elements. As a sanity check, remember that the eigenvalues of a Hermitian operator are real numbers, and you should convince yourself that this expression does indeed lead to real eigenvalues. Let's briefly discuss notation to make it more consistent with what you will often encounter when you work with two-state quantum systems. So far, we've been labeling the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian with the generic label lambda here. To make it clearer that the Hamiltonian is the operator associated with the total energy of the system, it is very common practice to replace lambda with E. And additionally, as for a two-state quantum system, we only have two possible eigenvalues. It is also very common practice to distinguish them with a plus-minus subindex. In this notation, the E plus eigenvalue is given by the expression that has the plus sign before the square root. And the E minus eigenvalue is given by the expression that has the minus sign before the square root. To be consistent with this notation, we can also update the corresponding eigenstates up here and replace psi with psi plus minus. With this notation, the eigenvalue equation of the Hamiltonian of a two-state quantum system takes this form. This notation makes it very clear that the energy spectrum of a two-state quantum system is made of two energy eigenvalues, and these systems are often called two-level systems. Okay, so next we will explore these eigenvalues in some more depth. Let's consider the special case when the two eigenvalues are degenerate. And that means uh, that E plus is equal to E minus. In this case, the argument of the square root must vanish. So let's copy that condition down. As this first term is non-negative, and this second term is also non-negative, then their sum can only be zero if the first term is exactly equal to zero, and the second term is also exactly equal to zero. From the first condition, we get that H11 must be equal to H22. And from the second condition, we get that H12 must vanish. As H21 is the complex conjugate of H12, that means that H21 must also vanish. In this case, we can write our eigenvalues as equal to this expression where the square root term has vanished. In this special case, we can simplify the notation further by noticing that we can use a single label for the two degenerate eigenvalues, and we will use E. And then using the fact that H11 is equal to H22, we can simplify this expression further and write it as equal to H11. So what do these results mean? Let's consider the usual two-state Hamiltonian. If we have two degenerate eigenvalues, which we label with the same letter E, then the corresponding Hamiltonian must take this very simple form. 
we can rewrite this as E times the matrix 1001, which is basically E times the 2 by 2 identity matrix. And so all of this means that a 2 by 2 Hamiltonian H will only have a degenerate spectrum if it is proportional to the identity matrix. And for any other matrix, the spectrum will not be degenerate. And another thing to note is that the proportionality constant is the value of the degenerate eigenvalue. Right, in principle, we're done with what we wanted to do. However, you may remember from the video on the 2 by 2 matrix space that we can write any 2 by 2 matrix in terms of the identity matrix, which in this context is typically labeled as sigma 0, and the three Pauli matrices sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3. As these four matrices are used very frequently as a basis, we're next going to derive the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian of a general two-state quantum system using this basis. Remember from the video on the 2 by 2 matrix space that we can write an arbitrary Hermitian operator, such as a Hamiltonian, in terms of a linear combination of the identity and Pauli matrices like this. Explicitly, this expression takes this form. For a general 2 by 2 complex matrix, the expansion coefficients d are complex scalars. But in the special case in which the matrix is a Hermitian matrix like the Hamiltonian here, then the expansion coefficients d are real scalars. Another commonly used notation when dealing with this form is to define a vector sigma which contains the three Pauli matrices as elements, and a vector d, which contains the expansion coefficients d1, d2, and d3 as elements. And in this more compact notation, we can rewrite the Hamiltonian operator h as d0, sigma0, plus d dot sigma. So, we now have that a general 2 by 2 Hamiltonian can be explicitly written in terms of its matrix elements like this, or it can also be written in terms of the identity and Pauli matrices like this. And we can also write this last expression explicitly in terms of matrix elements involving the D parameters like this. It is very easy to just read off the relation between these two formulations. So if we compare these two entries, we get that h11 is equal to d0 plus d3. Comparing these two entries, we get that h12 is equal to d1 minus i d2. If we now compare these two, we get that h21 is equal to d1 plus i d2. And finally, if we compare these two here, we get that h22 is equal to d0 minus d3. In the video on the 2 by 2 matrix space, we also invert these relations, and we find that d0 is given by this expression, d1 is given by this expression, d2 is given by this expression, and d3 is given by this one here. Overall, we can use either formulation for a 2 by 2 Hamiltonian, and then relate them through these equations. We often use the formulation in terms of the identity and Pauli matrices because it provides useful physical insights. So I think you will often find yourself calculating the D parameters using these equations before launching into subsequent calculations. For this reason, we will finish the video by recalculating the eigenvalues of a general 2 by 2 Hamiltonian in terms of the D parameters. We're going to calculate them by directly diagonalizing this second form of the Hamiltonian, but I encourage you to try calculating them using the alternative approach of exploiting these relations between the H matrix elements and the D parameters to convert the eigenvalues we got earlier into their expression in terms of the D parameters. 
Great. So this is our new form for the 2x2 two two Hamiltonian that we want to diagonalize. We again need to consider the corresponding characteristic equation, which is again given by this expression. But now, when we consider the argument of the determinant, we explicitly write out the Hamiltonian matrix in terms of d parameters minus lambda times the identity matrix. Evaluating this expression, we end up with d0 plus d3 minus lambda, d1 minus id2, d1 plus id2, and d0 minus d3 minus lambda. This means that we need the determinant of this expression to be equal to zero. Remember again that the determinant of a two by two matrix is simply the product of the diagonal terms, which I am reordering in a convenient way, minus the product of the of diagonal terms. And we need to set this to zero. So let's make some room again. And let's copy down the polynomial equation that we need to solve to determine the eigenvalues. Both terms have the form a plus b times a minus b, which as you know, is equal to a squared minus b squared. Using this relation, we can write the first term as d0 minus lambda all squared minus d3 squared. And the second term as minus d1 squared minus id2 all squared. And again, all of this is equal to zero. We can simplify this even further by realizing that this term reduces to plus d2 squared, so that we can rewrite this as lambda minus d0 squared minus d3 squared minus d1 squared minus d2 squared, and everything equal to zero. Note that I've also reordered the terms inside this square for convenience. And we can next write this as lambda minus d0 squared on the left hand side equal to d1 squared plus d2 squared plus d3 squared on the right hand side. Taking the square root of these expressions gives this result. And finally, we can write our eigenvalues lambda as equal to d0 plus minus the square root of d1 squared plus d2 squared plus d3 squared. And these are our two eigenvalues when written in terms of the d parameters. We should also note that we can rewrite the eigenvalues as equal to d0 plus minus the magnitude of the d vector remembering that we've defined the vector d as having the three components. Okay, so let's summarize our discussion of a two-state quantum system. We've been working with the Hamiltonian H and considered its eigenvalue equation. We've then looked at two options. First, the Hamiltonian can be explicitly written in terms of its matrix elements like this, and we found that in this notation, the eigenvalues are given by this expression. Alternatively, we can rewrite the Hamiltonian in the basis spanned by the identity and Pauli matrices, where the d parameters are real parameters. In this form, the eigenvalues are given by this expression. And you can use either form for the Hamiltonian when working with a two-state system, and you'll often find yourself using both depending on the context. Also note that in today's video, we haven't really said anything about the eigenstates up here. We actually have a full companion video discussing the eigenstates, so I really encourage you to check it out in the links below. Today, we found the eigenvalues of a general two-state quantum system. And that means that whenever you find a two-state quantum system, all you have to do is to quote the results that we've obtained today. Another example application of these results includes the study of the interaction between the electron spin and a magnetic field, but there are actually many other examples. And also don't forget to check out the companion video where we calculate the eigenstates of a general two-state quantum system. And as always, I hope that you liked the video and please subscribe.